Hey y'all. How are y'all doing? Happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. Um so today we are talking about Black history, past, present and future. Um you all know me. I am Monique, the Community Health Coordinator at Whitman Walker Health. Um, But today, I'm going to be joined by one of our interns. About to bring her in, right? See if this goes through. Her name is Skye. And it doesn't look like her request is coming through. Oh, there she goes. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm good. Hi, everyone. So I was just um, introducing everyone to you. Um, they see me every Wednesday. Um, so I was just letting them know your name and that you were an intern, but I didn't say an intern from where, so you can um, go ahead and share um, that information. So my name is Sky Chambers, and I'm an internship with uh, with the Urban Alliance program. Thank you. So Sky is new to our platform. You may have seen her once or twice already, um, but you'll be seeing her more often. Um, so Sky is about to do some Black history, past, present, and future with me. Um, but before we start, of course, you know, I have to get into my spiel. So what Milwaukee Health's Community Health Department has expanded its outreach efforts to the social media platform. We cover topics about HIV, STI, sexual health practices, access to care, social determinant of health, and general public health interventions. The next series of outreach sessions will focus on the current pandemic and ways to manage your sexual, personal, and mental health. Um, as always, our community health team is here to educate and support you. So... It's Black History Month. Last week we did um, some folks that um, people may not have known about in Black history. Um, But this week we're gonna do some that people may know um, and some that a lot of people know um, that were important to us now presently and also in the future, um, whether they are still with us here um, or have passed away. So, again, we all know how integral Black people Mm -hmm. are, not just to society, but in history, in current day, and in the future. Mentioned, I mentioned last week, some were prominent figures like Madam C.J. Walker, who was the first um, woman to become a self-made millionaire. Um, George Washington Carver, who came up with over 300 products just from Peanuts. Rosa Parks, um, Shirley Chisholm. Uh, John Mercer Langston, who will be talking about somebody who's related to him uh, later on in this live, Philip P. Downing, that created the the standing mailbox that's outside that you see that you just drop your mail in. Um, And I also learned from people in the comment section last week about Miss Green, who people know, also know as like the pancake lady. She was the lady on the box, the Aunt Jemima pancake box. Um, I learned last week that she used to go to carnivals all over selling pancakes. And that's how she got teamed up with the Pearl Milling Company, which is now the name of um, what used to be Aunt Jemima. Um, And Jackie Harris, um, who plays the mom on Sister, Sister, learned about her and her contributions to film and and TV. Um, But today... We will, like I said, talk about some well-knowns, past, present, and future. So, Sky, I think you're the one starting. You're starting with Langston Hughes. Yes. So, Langston Hughes. Last week, we talked about Langston Hughes, who was the first Black man to become a lawyer in Ohio. 
He also was the great uncle of a Harlem Renaissance poet. And Hughes was an American poet, social activist, novelist, playwright, and a columnist. He moved to New York at an early age, becoming one of the earliest innovators of a new art form, jazz poetry. In the early 1920s, his first book of poetry was published, and he wrote an in-depth weekly column highlighting the civil rights movement. Fun fact, his ashes are interred beneath a floor a medley in the middle of the foyer in the Scrum Fork Center for researchers in the Black culture of Harlem in the interest of the auditorium name for him. Yeah, so yeah, his ashes are basically um, underground under a medallion in the floor in the Schomburg, um Center for Research um, in Black culture in Harlem, New York. So I thought that that was cool. Next, we will move on to uh, Katherine Johnson, who was the first American woman to work for, first African-American woman, excuse me, to work for NASA as a scientist. Uh, she was a mathematician and her, cal her calculations um, of orbital mechanics um, as a NASA employee were critical to the success of the first and um, following crewed space flights. Um, her work included calculating trajectories, launch windows, and emergency return paths for Project um, Mercury, um, including including those for astronauts Alan Shepard and John Glenn, whose um, rendezvous paths for the Apollo Lunar Module and Command Module on mm -hmm. flights to the moon. Uh, let's see, let's see. Oh, in 2015, she was awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom by President Barack Obama. In 2016, she was presented with the Silver Snoopy Award by NASA astronaut Leland Melvin. And of course, we know her more recently, even though she's been a part of history, we know her more recently from the movie Hidden Figures, which came out about maybe five, six years ago, um, which Taraji P. Henson played her. Um, and she passed away in 2020 at 101 years old, but she was inducted into the National Women's Hall of Fame just last year in 2021. Go ahead, next, Scott. Next up, we have Ruby Bridges. Ruby Bridges was the first African-American at six years old to desegregate her school in, Louis in Louisiana in 1960. Ruby's birth year in 1954 coincided with the U.S. Supreme Court landmarks ruling the Brown versus the Board of Education of Kansas, which ended racial segregation in the public schools. But Southern states continued to resist integration. In 1959, Ruby attended a segregated... One second. Mm-hmm. My computer is like the worst. Oh, segregated in New York kindergarten. A year later, however, a federal court ordered Louisiana to desegregate the school district created entrance exams for African American students to see whether they could complete academically at, at the all white school. Ruby and five others, Ruby and five others passed the exam. Ruby and her mother were escorted by federal marshals to the school every day. She walked past screaming crowds of people unbothered. She later said she only became scared when she saw a woman holding a black baby doll in a coffin. She spent her first day in the principal's office due to the chaos created by angry white parents pulling their children from school. Barbara Henry, a white woman, was the only teacher willing to accept Ruby, and all year she was she was a class of one. Ruby ate lunch alone and sometimes played with her teacher at recess, but she never missed a day of school. Ruby Witches is still alive today at the age of 67. Schools have only been segregated for 68 years. Yeah, so that last part, schools have only been desegregated for 68 years. I actually hit my Googles and did some searching. And while majority of schools have been desegregated for 68 years, which it's, it sounds like a long time, but it's actually not a long time. The last school to be desegregated was um, a school in Mississippi, and it was desegregated in 2016. So that was legit, like what, 
four, five, five, six, six, six years ago, actually. And that was the last school to be desegregated in Mississippi. So that just goes to show you. Um, another prominent person that is more current, but everybody knows, is Serena Williams. So um, Serena Williams has always been popular, but I think more popular recently because a movie just came out about um, her and her sister and her dad called King Richard. Um, legit, like maybe six months ago. It was like towards the end of 2021. Um, really, really good movie. But uh, Serena is a African-American tennis player who revolutionized women's tennis with her powerful style of play and who has won more Grand Slam, Grand Slam single titles, 23 of them, um, than any other man or woman during the um, open era. Uh, Serena learned tennis from her dad, of course, on the public courts of Los Angeles and turned professional in 1995, one year after her sister Venus. Uh, the sisters soon started to attract a lot of attention. Many thought that Venus would be the first Williams sister to win a Grand Slam, but it was actually Serena, and Serena's younger. Um, she won the 1999 U.S. Open. At that tournament, they, both of them together, won double events um, over the course of their career. Both of them teamed up for 14 Grand Slam titles. In 2002, Serena won the French Open, the U.S. Open, and Wimbledon, all in 2002. She also won um, the Australian Open in 2003, basically completing like a Grand Slam career of winning all of the components for that tournament. She also won again at Wimbledon, US Open and the Australian Open over, um, over the last few years, even through inj injuries and various health issues. She went on to get married. She had a pretty little baby girl named Alexis. Um, but while she was pregnant or during her delivery and after birth, she had some complications um, that she had to like make folks aware of, like her doctors and nurses, they weren't taking her seriously. Um, and she basically was like, if I didn't advocate for myself, I probably would have died. Um, and she started to raise awareness after around Black maternal health and advocating for self in medical circumstances, um, which is very, very big to me because I am a Black woman and a mom. And Sky, you're a Black woman and a mom as well. So making sure that we raise, we raise excuse me, awareness around Black maternal health is very, very, very important. Um, in the last, I mean, let's be clear that Black women have died during childbirth, like, since birthing was happening. But it's become, like, a really, really big thing in the last few years because people are taking notice and people are raising awareness that, like, Black women aren't being taken seriously or aren't being heard during not only the birthing period, but during pregnancy as well. So it's very, very important to make sure that you have a doctor, an OB or a midwife, whatever, that is listening to your concerns and also like making sure that you are okay. Um, so yeah, that's Serena. Next up we have Thurgood Marshall. Yeah, so Thurgood Marshall. Thurgood Marshall was an African-American lawyer and civil rights activist who served as an associate justice of the Supreme Court of the United States from 1961 until 1991. Marshall was the court's first African-American justice. Born in Baltimore Maryland, Baltimore, Maryland, Marshall graduated from the Howard University School of Law in 1933. He established a private legal practice in Baltimore before funding the NAACP Legal Defense and Education Fund, where he was the executive director in the position. He argued several cases before the, before the Supreme Court including Brown versus Board of Education, the later of which held the racial segregation in public education in a violation of the Equal Protection Clause. This made it possible for Ruby Bridges to become the first African-American child to integrate school. Thurgood Marshall was a, civil, was a civil rights lawyer who used the courts to fight Jim Crow and 
This man who said Grisha in the U.S. Yep. And we also have William Tucker. William Tucker was the first person of a African ancestry. Did I say that right? Mm -hmm. Born in the 13 British colonies. His birth symbolized the beginning of a district African-American identity along the eastern coast of what would eventually become the United States. William Tucker was born in 1624 near Jamestown, Virginia, and the son of two African and in tourist servants, historians. Historians do not know much of William Tucker's life due to the limited pieces of primary information available. According to the 1624-1625 Virginia census, did I say that right? Uh-huh, census. 22 Africans lived in Virginia at the time of Tucker's birth. The first 20 of these Africans arrived in 1619. All of them worked under, wait, I'm sorry, my computer. You're fine. Worked under contracts. They worked under contracts. These men and women were not thought of slaves because Virginians, Africans, and Americans assembly, I mean, African Americans, Virginians received the same rights, duties, privileges, responsibilities, and punishments as their white counterparts from the Great Britain. They also worked under the same terms and many and many but not were all given land at the end of their previous service. They and their descendants became the start to the free black population which existed in Virginia prior to the Civil Rights War. Yeah, prior to the Civil War. So William Tucker was actually I guess he was like the first African American because he was the first African born in what we know today as America, but back then there were colonies still, the British colonies. Um, so he was the first African American because he was born in America but had African parents, um, which I think is like so dope. And I wish that we could find more information on him, but I guess back then. Nobody was keeping record like that. Um, next, we have Kobe Bryant. We all know Kobe. Loved Kobe. Still love Kobe. But um, Kobe, Kobe was born in Philly, in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Um, the only son to a former NBA player, Joe Bryant. And he also had an uncle who played for the NBA as well on his mother's side. Um, his parents named him actually after. So there's um, a place in Japan called Kobe, and there's also like a slice of beef that's supposed to be really, really good. It's also called Kobe beef. So he's named after the beef. Um, and his middle name is Bean, which he's, which was his father's nickname. Well, half of his father's nickname. His father's nickname was Jelly Bean. Um, he, <laughs> he started playing basketball when he was three. Um, and it's said that the Lakers were his favorite team while he was growing up. Um, when he was six, his father retired from the NBA. They moved to Italy um, for a while. He ended up learning how to speak Italian, so he spoke Italian fluently. He moved his family, and he moved back to the United States when he was 13, um, and then he got drafted in 1996, I think when he was 17, um, to his favorite team, the Lakers. And he played with the Lakers from 1996 to 2016. Um, during that time, Kobe won and y'all can correct me, anybody in the comments who is a big Kobe fan or basketball fan in general, but during his career, he won five championships, um, three MVP awards and made 15 all-star game appearances. Um, he started the Mamba Sports Academy in 2018 to create um, opportunities for underserved athletes. Uh, the name, however, has since been changed uh, to respect the wishes of his family since he died. However, his family um, has started uh, the Mamba and Mamba Sita um, Foundation in honor of him and his daughter, Gianna. Um, 
after they passed away in a helicopter crash at the beginning of 2020, um, along with seven other um, seven others who they knew. So, you know, his legacy will continue to live on through his family. Okay, next we have Maya Angelou. We all heard of Maya Angelou. Mm-hmm. I'm yeah. sure at the, her books or something. Yes. So, Maya Angelou was, a, was an African-American poet and civil rights activist. She published seven autobiographies, three books of essays, several books of poetry, and is created with the list of plays, movies, television shows, spanning over 50 years. She received dozens of awards and more than 50 honor, honorary degrees. Honorary, mm-hmm. Honorary degrees. Angela is best known for her series of seven autobiographies, which focus on her childhood and early adult experiences. The first, I, I know why the, I know why the cage bird sings, set her life up to the age of seventeen and brought her international recognition and acclaim. She became a poet and writer after a string of odd jobs during her young adulthood. These included fry cook sex worker, nightclub performer, Barkley, and best cast member, mm -hmm. Southern Christian Leadership Conference Coordinator and Correspondent in Egypt and Guyani, Guyani during the decolation of Africa. She was also an actress, writer, director, and producer of plays, movies, and public television programs. In 1982, she was named the first re... The first, first Reynolds professor. First Reynolds professor of American Studies. American Studies at Wake Forest University in Winston-Salem, North California. Carolina. She, oh, North Carolina, I'm sorry. She was active in the civil rights movement and worked with Martin Luther King Jr. and Malcolm X. In 1993, Angelou received, I mean, recited her poem on the Pulse of Mourning and the first integration of Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton making her the first poet to make an inaugural. 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 Re, re, I don't know how to pronounce the word. Hold on. Ignoraglu, how you pronounce it? Recitation. <laughs> yes, recitation. Since Robert Falls at the inauguration of John F. Kennedy in 1961. Yep. So, have you had to read that book? I know how the cage bird sings, Sky. Yes, at school, like in middle school. In middle school, yeah, I was trying. So I had to read it too, but I couldn't remember if I had to read it in middle school or in high school. Yeah, I read it in middle school. Yeah, so I definitely read it. I remember it being a really thick book, so I was like, maybe I read it in high school, but it, it probably was middle school. Yeah, like we read it without teachers and stuff. Yeah. Um. So last but not least, we have somebody else that is very, very well known as well, Nipsey Hussle. So born Ermius Askadam, um, but professionally known as Nipsey Hussle. He was an African-American rapper emerging from the West Coast in Cali in the hip hop scene in the mid 2000s. Um, Hussle independently released his first mixtape, Slauson Boy, volume one, to moderate local success. So he became a big thing in Cali where he is from. Um, also like, I think I was watching like his documentary or like something about him after he passed away that said that like people tried to like producers tried to come to him to like get him to sign, get him to sign. And he just wasn't taking any old deal. So he was like, nah, like I'll keep selling my mixtape out the trunk of my car until I get a deal that suits me, which I guess he did. And he ended up signing with um, cinematic music group and Epic records um, he became known for his numerous mixtapes, including, um, Bullets Ain't Got No Name, uh, The Marathon, The Marathon Continues, which everybody, I think, knows, and Crenshaw. Um, after 
Much Delay, his debut studio album, um, Victory Lap, came out in 2018, had a lot of success. Um, it was nominated for Best Rap Album um, at the 61st Grammys Award in 2019, and then um, two more Grammys after he passed away for the songs Racks in the Middle, which is actually one of my favorites, and Higher. Um, and I think he won them, actually. Yeah, I think he won them. Uh, he was also known for his work within the Black community, though. He inaugurated the Marathon Clothing Store, which is actually where um, he was shot and killed right in front of his store. Um, and he also founded a co-working space uh, called Vector 90. He wanted to focus on giving solutions and inspiration to young black men like himself. He denounced gun violence through his music. He influenced um, influence and community work. He spoke openly about his experiences with gang culture. He was affiliated with a gang called the Rolling 60s. Um, and he often performed and worked with rival blood affiliate um, rappers. We, we already know the gangs, Bloods and Crips. Um, so he worked um, with rival Bloods affiliate rappers to set an example. He funded imp improvements in neighborhoods, schools, spent time with students, um, participated in panels um, about growing up in the area and the influence of gang culture from his own experience. He believed that um, the Crenshaw area was being underserved and that young people would benefit from communal workspaces, workspaces which is why he came up with Vector 90. Um, he wanted young people to be able to take classes in science, technology, and mathematics at Vector 90. Um, what else? Oh, he was also involved in planning and advisory um, and the advisory stages of the Destination Crimshaw Project, which was which will because they're still working on it in his name, um, which will showcase the history and culture of blacks in his neighborhood. Um, in March 2019, it was said that Nipsey had contacted officials from the LAPD to arrange a meeting with him and Rock Nation um, about what they could do to help prevent the gang violence happening in um, South LA. The meeting was set to take place April 1st, but unfortunately, Nipsey was shot and killed literally the day before, March 31st. Um, his, since then, his family and loved ones and supporting fans have done and are continuing to do the work to make sure that his legacy lives on and that the marathon continues. So those were our few people today from the past, present, and future. Um, definitely next week, we're going to be talking about um, Black culture and Black entrepreneurship. So basically how, how we can start Black-owned businesses, how we can support Black-owned businesses, um, and I'll have someone who on with me who has a black owned business, won't tell you who, but they will be able to share um, what their business is about. You can purchase from them. I also have a black owned business. I'll tell you more about that next week, Wednesday. Um, next week, Wednesday is the last, uh, the last Wednesday in black history month. So next week is at next week is actually well, not next week, the following week. There's like a few days. That's the last week of Black History Month. So we're going to round out all things Black history with how you can support, how we can support each other. You have anything you want to say, Sky? No, um, it was nice skin on here, speaking with you. Talking you too. To you about people in the community. Yeah. Um, Happy that I got to share those different people from the past and the present with you all. Yep. Well, thank you for being on with us. We will have Sky on with us a lot more um, on different various topics. So you'll be seeing more of Sky. Um, but yeah, for now, that is it. Happy Wednesday. Enjoy. We still have a few more days of Black History Month. So enjoy it. 
learn all you can, soak up all you can. Um, and also remember that you're not only Black just in February. You're Black 365. So it is important to... Um, it's important to embody and always remember and take pride in that, okay? So until next time, bye y'all, bye Sky. Thank you.